So welcome all for today's FR session. My name is Mr. John Mark, a lecturer at KCE. And today FR session, I want us to look at accounting for public sector. We talk about accounting for public sector, that's regulated under IPSAS, International Public Sector Accounting Standard. Now, accounting for public sector, we are in this case, we mean accounting for government entities such as ministries, parastatos, agency, ETC. So that's what we'll be covering under this accounting for public sector. Another thing you need to note is that the difference between the public sector and other private sector is that for the private sector, they operate with an objective of making a profit. But for the government entities, they are there not to make profit, but to offer services to the members of the public. That's why there is a difference between the private sector and the public sector. And accounting for public sector or accounting is, account, uh, is regulated by the following method. So we look at methods of accounting and methods of accounting for public sector. One, we have cash basis of accounting. Also, there is an accrual basis, accrual basis of accounting. Then we have fund accounting. And number four, we have budgeting accounting. Yeah, those are the methods of accounting for public sector. And the first one is the cash basis account uh, of accounting. And that mostly is applied by the national government. Gov national government uses the cash basis of accounting. This is where what they pay or what they incur, that's what they record. Regardless of accrual, uh, regardless of the amount they earned. So you're saying in this case, for example, if you are uh, received, assuming you earned 9 million, that's what you earned. But you only received 8 million. This is what you earned, but this is what you received. Now, under the cash basis of accounting, you record what you received, not what you earned. That's the cash basis of accounting. Then we have accrual basis of accounting. Now, under accrual basis of accounting, this is where you record what you earned, for example, if you're dealing with the income, what you earned, rather than what you received. For the accrual means, for example, in this case, you earned 9 million, but that during the year you only received 8 million. In this case, you'll show 9 million. What you earned, not what you received. Now, for the county government, if they are using both cash basis and now they have adopted uh, the use of accrual basis of accounting. And then we have the fund accounting. Fund accounting is mostly applicable and uh, by the uh, retirement benefits eh? or the pension scheme. And then we have budgeting accounting. Those are the, some of the methods used for accounting for public sector. Now let's look at the differences. What are the differences between public sector and private sector? Yeah, let's look at what are those are uh, some of the differences between the two. So here I write the difference. Here we have public sector and here we have the private sector. So one of the difference is about the objective. Objective. We have said that for the public sector, they are there to offer services. Eh? Their main objective is to offer services to the members of the public. To the members of the public or to offer services to the citizens but for the private sector the major objective they exist is for them to make the profit major objective is to make profit that's one of the difference between the public and the private sector another difference let's talk about ownership who owns the public sector? Who owns the pub, uh, private sector? Now, public sector, they are owned by the government or general public. They are owned by the general public. But for the private sector, they are owned by investors or we can say shareholders. 
yeah, owned by the shareholders, investors, or the entrepreneurs. Eh? Yeah, that's another difference. Uh -huh. Another difference we can look at is all about the funding. Funding. Who funds the public sector and who funds the uh, private sector? Now, for the public sector, they are funded by the government. Funded by the government. Eh? Majorly through the taxes. Through the taxes. Eh? And how do we fund the uh, private sector? Private sector, they are funded by the owners. Funded by the owners. When you talk about the owners, we are talking about the investors, shareholders, yeah, etc. So that's another difference for the funding. Uh -huh. Another difference we can look at is all about accountability. Accountability. Now, for the public sector, they are accountable to the members of the public. And that's why Whenever there is a corruption, for example, let's assume in the Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Health, eh? uh, for example, the current situation we have of COVID, corruption, the COVID-19 millionaires, eh? in that case, the general public must be informed. Because in this case, eh, Ministry, of, uh, Ministry of Health is part of the public sector. And they're owned by the government or owned by the members of the public. And in that case, they're accountable to the members of the public. But for the private sector, they'll be accountable to the owner or to the shareholders only. And that's why whenever there is a scandal in a private sector, it's hard for you to know, not unless you are a shareholder or you are a major stakeholder in that entity. So in this case, we are saying that for the accountability for the public sector, they are accountable to the members of the public. To the members of the public. Majorly through the office of the Auditor General. Yeah, through the office of the Auditor General. But for the private sector, they are accountable to the shareholders. Accountable to the shareholders or the owners. Yeah, those are the some of the differences between the public sector and the private sector. You can think of any and you add this is this is not the um, this is just the list. Eh? Yeah. So Objective, ownership, funding, accountability. You can also talk about the accounting, eh? the accounting concept. For the private sector, majorly they use the accrual basis of accounting, but for the public sector, mostly they use the cash basis of accounting. And then we have also said that public sector, they are regulated by the IPSAS, International Public Sector Accounting Standard, but the private sector, they are regulated by IAS, International Accounting Standards. Yeah, those are the sum of the differences. So now let's look at the sum of the benefits. Benefits of adopting IPSAS. Yeah, what are the sum of the benefits of adopting IPSAS? Number one is that it improves accountability. Improves accountability and transparency. Mm -hmm. Another benefit of ad adopting IPSAS by the government entities is that it improves reliability. It improves reliability of the accounts. Reliability yeah, of the accounts and therefore, therefore boosting, therefore boosting Therefore, boosting confidence of the external agencies. External agencies. And what are those some of external agencies? Eh? Which they usually rely on the uh, government accounts. So we may have entity like uh, IMF or the World Bank. Yeah, they are part of uh, those external agencies. Eh? Number three, another benefit of adopting IPSAS by the government it enhances, it enhances comparability. It enhances uh, comparability among government entities. Among government entities. Another importance is that it emphasizes, it gives an emphasis or it emphasizes on performance. 
yeah it emphasizes on performance as well as and this and in this case eh, it helps in minimizing uh, misuse of the public uh, funds and then number five it improves audit yeah it improves audit of public institution of public institution those are the some of the benefit of adopting ipsas by the various government entities so what are those challenges let's now look at the challenges in adopting or in adoption of ipsas yeah what are those challenges faced by the government entities in adopting ipsas number one it's sovereignty of different current countries Sovereignty of different countries. What does that mean? You see, that means that different uh, countries, eh, they operate independently. And in that case, they prefer using their own uh, accounting standards. Eh? So in that case, we have sovereignty of different countries. And in that case, you may find that different countries, they are using different IPSAs. Eh? And then number two, another challenge is independent. Sorry, or different country or saying that different countries having different country having different accounting requirement or different reporting requirement yeah various government having different uh, reporting requirement another challenge is that different countries have different rules different nations having different laws yeah and in that case that apply to different government entities also another challenge eh, there can be also be challenge in resources challenge in resources also systems and personnel and personnel to implement IPSAS. To implement IPSAS. Yeah, sometimes the interpretation eh, or the application of the international public sector accounting standard may be somehow be difficult. And in that case, they require some system or personnel to help in interpretation of those IPSAS. Good. So those are the some of the benefits and the challenges in adopting IPSAS.